Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, teamasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me, teamasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing the best new dive watch of 2020, and yes, that is bearing in mind the other big dive watch splash. Forget the Rolex Submariner, this is what you should be buying. The Oris Aquastate Caliber 400 launched this year with an all-new in-house five-day automatic movement that's really just the tip of the iceberg, a very, very appealing value-laden iceberg. The watch is steel, 43.5 millimeters in diameter, but it wears smaller than that because it's only 50 millimeters from lug to lug. In terms of thickness, it's reasonably thin at 13.4 millimeters, which is good for a aggressive diving watch. So the timepiece, though large, wears more like a 41 on the wrist. So if you can wear the current Rolex sub, you can wear this. You'll also note it's pretty flat which allows it to slide underneath the cuff. The case back is cupped, and when you cinch it down properly sized, it will be remarkably flat on your wrist. Lug to lug, you can see it's not terribly broad. I've got plenty of clearance on both sides, and I think you could wear this watch well on a wrist as small as about 14 centimeters circumference. Now, there are two versions of this watch. The one you buy on the bracelet comes with the strap. The one you buy on the strap comes only with the strap, but you could, if you wish, buy the bracelet. I say this because this is also the first Oris Aquas to feature a quick release system for its lug junction. So I can quickly and easily pop open this little clamshell snap and pull the strap right out. I could do that easily on each side without any tools. And this is a new feature on the Oris Aquas. You'll also note the strap is nicely made. It's supple, it's thick so it won't tear. It has a little hollow under each side to better vent the wrist. And as you can see, it's a handsome matte finish with a little bit of a striation that leads into the lug junction. It's good looking, it feels good, and it's equipped with a full deployant clasp, which you can see is a trigger release so it can pop open accidentally. A big upgrade from the clamshells generally used by Breitling and Breitling at a higher price point. As you can see, it's a combination of satin finish and polish externally with a little bit of engine turning internally, which is a detail I like. There is a minderless system, and I always use that term to describe a strap, that ducks under the clasp, so there's no need for strap minders on the opposite side. It's a very clean look. No excess length is externally visible once this is strapped together and pinned in place and properly sized for your wrist. Now, if you look, you can see that there's actually a push-button slider system built in. You can pull this all the way out and use it as a dive extension, or you can take advantage of the five detents that are built in, so you can use it for precise adjustment of the sizing. Rolling over the case band, you can see it's a fascinating and non-standard case. Everyone seems to copy the Submariner, but Oris, to its credit, designed a case that looks like nothing else in the dive segment. Maybe there's a little bit of Calibre de Cartier diver, maybe, but for the most part, this is a distinctive and unusual look with the lugs sharply broken out from the case band. You have a case that actually has a conical profile, narrowing as you move up its flank, and then there's a nice contrast between polish and satin, so the watch looks more expensive than it is. Polished lug hoods, polished bezel frame, and the bezel frame surrounding a ceramic insert, something you don't expect in this price point. You might expect anodized aluminum, and I certainly would have, but the Ceramic is highly scratch resistant and nicely keyed to the aquamarine, almost turquoise blue gradient of the dial. The crown features removable crown shoulders, so you can actually have them replaced if they get gouged in the line of duty. There's a big crown style crown. It's a little bit of a vintage evocative piece, though the Aquas is not the vintage diver at Oris. That would be the Diver 65. The dial's upscale. First, there's this lovely, almost electric, ionic blue that fades to navy black, almost black a very dark blue at the edge, that navy color blending into the bezel nicely, making the watch look like an enormous dial as one color flows into the other. The dial also includes lovely rhodium-plated steel applique indices, and this is another way in which the watch belies its price. As you might expect, a printed dial at this price point, but once again, Oris is giving you more than you expect for a retail price for around $3,000 on the strap. It's quite impressive. 300 meters water resistant. The watch features a stop seconds function, which I will demonstrate now. And provided, oh, you see, that's why I always adjust. Provided you're not in the date change danger zone, the watch also includes a quick set so you can rapidly reset the calendar down at six o'clock, which in good taste keeps the dial balanced by replacing an index. Loom shot to follow, but around case back, all is changed. This is the new caliber 400. Headline numbers, five-day power reserve, 
10-year warranty. Both are a big deal. Now, the movement is almost it's almost a high-end caliber in its bare specifications. It's adjusted to five positions like a chronometer. The 21 Joule movement is guaranteed to run from the factory no worse than minus three plus five seconds per 24 hours, which is even in excess of the COSC requirements. The balance is still a high beat balance. Beats weigh at 28,800 vibrations per hour. So a low beat rate wasn't used to extend the power reserve. Two large mainspring barrels were used to extend the power reserve. Look carefully, and you can even see an unlubricated high-efficiency anti-magnetic full silicon escapement. Etacron is used to adjust, and I like that, the timing, because Etacron allows for very precise adjustment, and there's even a proprietary micrometric regulator with a rack and pinion screw mounted on the opposite side of the regulator assembly. It's a sort of cool combination of satin finish and media blasting, which is price appropriate and also looks kind of cool as the watch has a machine aesthetic. Everything about this timepiece is impressive. Again, if you want something that's technically proficient on a comparable level, you're probably going to be looking at a Blancpain 50 Fathoms because you're not going to get anywhere near five days of power reserve out of a Rolex Submariner, even the 2020. So this is a watch that exceeded my expectations and exceeded my highest hopes. The best new dive watch of 2020 is the Oris Aquas Date. Reach out to Team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. And we're back with the Oris Aquas Date. I should mention the watch also has a high degree of anti-magnetism. Not Milgauss, not the likes of the anti-magnetic or amagnetic swatch watches, but solidly more than the ISO 764 standard for an anti-magnetic watch.